Last video I broke all three sanders trying to get down to the gel coat of our 40 foot sailboat that we hauled out for the first time here in Yucatan, Mexico. I'm on sanding device number 4 now. It's a variable speed grinder with a sanding disc. Another 120 USD drop to make sure that this essential task gets done. Finally, I was getting somewhere, revealing the true state of our hull. So we've got that on number one there. That's even slower than the RPMs that my sanders usually run at. With a soft pad, I was able to get this at the closest hardware store. And this is much more aggressive than the sanders, and I wish I had been using it all along. This boatyard boasts the largest travel lift on this side of Mexico, so we've been seeing some very large vessels coming through, including the Riviera Maya's passenger ferries. It might go without saying that it's unbearably hot here. There is very little greenery and very little food sources here, so I'm attempting to cook with the ghost sun as much as possible. Today, it's vegetarian tamales. You gotta watch out for this green sauce. The creamy guacamole that they sell in the grocery stores everywhere. To get any place that sells food, it's a bit of a trek. If I don't want to ride on a busy road, I can also come out into the middle of the bumpy desert, take this sandy, almost beachfront. Ooh, it's pretty sandy. My tires almost can't take it. But eventually I started to ride with my fellow Bodhi here in the yard on her scooter. There's something that I wanted to try doing this time around being in the yard. That is, going to the gym. There are several good and inexpensive ones nearby. It might seem counterintuitive to spend time working out while trying to do physical labor in the boat. Time to work out everything that is not my arms. But you know what? It's good for my health, and it stops me from losing my mind. Drop the, the epoxy has almost arrived in the mail, and it's time to seal up those extraneous through holes and other holes in the hull. I have to make sure that they are completely clean. The hull is several centimeters thick in some places because of the balsa core, so I'm going to use some scrap wood to help fill in that core and save on epoxy filler. I'm going to cut some circles here. I just have to find the right size of hole saw for each individual hole in the hull that I'll be sealing up forever. That one's perfect for this one. Some of them fit perfectly. So again, I'm going to clean everything up super well with acetone, tape it up. Mm -hmm. 
and prepare the biaxial and matte mix fiberglass cloth. This hollow out round we're going to use mainly Seahawk slow hardening epoxy. It's supposed to be comparable to West System epoxy, but a little less expensive. The idea being that we negate the high cost of importing and transporting the epoxy all the way here. Despite trying to do that, the epoxy and the two-part primer for our bottom job look like they're going to be the single most expensive order we've ever made for this boat. Almost 1200 USD for just over 6 gallons of epoxy and two-part primer. At first, I was just pouring into mini sauce cups that we'd been saving up from ordering pizzas for the last year, but I would improve on that soon enough. Also, we found a shop five minutes away from the yard that sells thickeners for a very reasonable price. When I'm epoxying, I always have my bottle of cooking oil on hand to protect and clean my hands because we don't have tons of gloves to work with. This would be one of the easiest epoxy jobs I'd done so far. All done on pretty flat horizontal surfaces. Just tap the air bubbles, starting from the center of the circle and tapping outwards. No drips, no corners, no funny business. But I had to work quickly though to get all these holes in the hull filled in in one go. Not looking like many bubbles. And then I had to get everything closed up and cleaned up so I could sleep in here later. The results were satisfactory. Nice. With the entire bottom of the boat sanded down to the original gel coat, I gave it all a good wash and prepared to fill the blisters. At this stage, the boat was becoming very crispy and dry. I was still finding spots that could be chipped away, areas where I could see that the gel coat was lifting off the hull a little bit. Acetone, for cleaning, got some rags, got my squeegees, small, medium, large, some yogurt cups, filler, talcum powder, nice and sticky and dirty here. Got the epoxy part one and two. I've made some nice little collars. I've made nice little collars out of tops of soda bottles. Those make them pour perfectly. Got my cooking oil for hand cleanup, mixing stick, got some gloves. I'm doing uh, fiberglass. I mixed up some small batches of two-part epoxy and filler. And then some footage went missing here, but there was quite a bit of delamination on one or two layers of the fiberglass down the center of the bottom of the boat. I wetted it all out and fiberglassed as needed.
I made my first pass with epoxy over everything and now I'm going to do my second pass with the sander then there will be a second pass of epoxy and then hopefully just one last pass with the sander but we'll see how this goes You may have noticed a little bit less Robbie in the videos. That's because he was whisked away to do work on other people's boats. Mm. I needed him here, but we of course need to make a little bit of cash to pay for the boat yard. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the rudder after sanding the rudder. It's, I see now it's covered in kind of like a Bondo. I'm familiar with the Bondo we used a, a little bit. The car filler, kind of polyester resin filler on Rosa a bit for some things that were in the interior and above the waterline. And I really didn't like the Bondo. It's clearly not as strong and as, as high quality as epoxy, obviously. There's water intrusion under the layers of the putty here under the Bondo everywhere on the rudder and I'm considering taking it all off. The more I go digging, the more I find, basically. Some of these are sanding off perfectly flush. This one. I won't have to put any more epoxy on that one. But then right under it, this one's looking a little less sanded. Of course, the big ones, the bigger they are, the harder they were to fill in with the small putty knife. So they'll need a lot more work. These bigger ones, for example, If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to click like at the end, subscribe, most importantly, hit that little bell so that YouTube actually shows you when my videos post. I've more or less sanded the boat for a second time now, and I have these areas that haven't been sanded, the little crevices all along the bottom of the boat, that curved area. And I'm probably going to do Take my little pile of used sanding discs and a plastic tube. We also have some metal tubes. And I'm gonna try sanding, hand sanding, all that. The second sanding was coming to an end, but now it looked like there was going to be quite a bit of epoxying to do again. I might even try something with a bigger diameter. After all the fairing of the hull is over, we're going to have to install $850 USD worth of through hulls and valves that we ordered. Because first and foremost, it's important to keep the boat from sinking. The cost of this haul out has been a little more, just a little more, than the cost of our last haul out with our, with our last boat that we owned, Rosa. I think I remember from the final video of our refit of Rosa, I think the number was somewhere around 4,000 USD. For the whole thing, for the haul out, uh, we had a, a lot of the materials on hand already on board, like the epoxy, uh, fiberglass, and we didn't end up paying for any of the work that was done after we left the boat. We simply uh, put up the number that it cost to haul out the boat and to do that uh, interior work with wood and epoxy and fiberglass. That came to about, I think, $4,000. we are reaching the $4,000 mark here with Inesperado, and we still have a ways to go. So we have um, still work to do with the tiller. The metal shop hasn't given us a quote two months in. 
We still need to buy a new propeller. We just got the cutlass bearing in. Robbie just put the shaft back on. The biggest cost so far, I think, has been the haul out itself, the boat being in the yard per month. And a really big cost for us was replacing some of those through hulls. Not even all of the through hulls, and most of the seacocks, that bronze. And if we had chosen to go with some plastic through hull, looking at the prices to ship here to Mexico, it would have been even more expensive. We also dropped a lot of money on the epoxy this time and our primer paint. Just the epoxy and the primer, two part primer, cost us the biggest chunk. I think there's kind of a misconception that uh, Mexico is very cheap. Now, there are some costs that are lower in Mexico, generally cost of living, but here in the boatyard on the Atlantic side, it has not been lower cost. I looked up costs for some boatyards in Florida, and they seem to have a lower boatyard and haul out costs than here. I think that we made the right choice to come a little bit further to Progresso. If the boat had been uh, in more sailing condition, I think we might have gotten a better deal if we had ended up in the States, but this was the closest place we could come for the lowest cost. And I have to say, if we had made the choice to sandblast the bottom, that would have been a good deal here. I'm kind of regretting not sandblasting the bottom. That would have cost us a couple hundred dollars more, maybe five, six hundred dollars US. It would have also saved us probably about a month and, and so we wouldn't have had to pay the cost of the boat being on the hard for one extra month. But then again, it could have also made a lot more work for us so uh, and a lot more material cost for us because of course sandblasting we would remove the entire gel coat, fibrous gel coat layer and then we would have had to replace that layer. How do we afford all this? Actually, the answer is that we don't. But our patrons keep us afloat, and a friend and a viewer of ours straight up helped us pay for the epoxy and through holes. So I think the moral of the story might be that if you want to salvage a 40-year-old and 40-foot sailboat, and you want to do the project in Mexico where the weather is warm and you can dry out the osmosis -y hull, without hiring labor and not including any other projects or complications that might arise, you will need at least 4,500 USD to do it. Join us next time as we figure out how to contort, pretzel, and Houdini our way out of the boatyard and back into the water.